Hi everyone, welcome back to the Red Blossom Tea channel. In this video, we're going to kick off our series on terroir by focusing on elevation. If you've looked at our How We Source Teas videos, at Red Blossom, we select teas based on variety, harvest season, provenance, and style of crafting. Terroir is basically provenance. So the French use terroir, the term for their wines. In Chinese, we refer to terroir as shui tu. Shui meaning water, tu meaning the soil. So basically, terroir includes the climate, the soil, um, rainfall. So a lot of physical uh, components contribute the flavor of the tea. But we also uh, want to look at the biotic uh, components as well. So all of these contribute to the flavors. And today we'll look at elevation and use Formosa oolongs as an example. So the three teas are Dongding from Nanto. This is harvested at 700 meters, which is only about 2,000 feet. The one in the middle is a true high mountain oolong. Oftentimes, high mountain oolong is referred to as any of the Formosa oolongs, but a true high mountain starts at about 1,600 meters. Alishan is a mountain range that's most famous. 1,600 meters is about 5,000 feet. And then the holy grail of the Formosa oolong is Da Yuling. Da Yuling is near Lishan, and at 2,600 meters, this is basically located close to 9,000 feet. So everything grows slower at the highest peaks. To keep all the variables the same, we've measured out a tablespoon for brewing the teas. And you can weigh it out as well. It's approximately five to six grams. And I'm using the summer gaiwan today. So I've measured out a tablespoon for each of these bowls and we're going to time it. I'll be timing it for three minutes. So the water I'm using is hot enough to drink. It's close to about 195 Fahrenheit. And we'll start our timer. Once you start timing like this, it really gives you an idea um, of what each of these um, teas taste like and how elevation affects it. At the lower elevation, you get a nice refreshing taste, but beginning with the Ali Shan, the high mountain oolong is um, going to give you a much longer finish. The color of the leaves, how they open up, all looks roughly the same, but in terms of flavor, it's a big difference. Uh, it's, it's a lot, to, to us, it's a lot like having a, a good quality cheese. If you've had a, a regular cheddar, it's very nice. But once you get to the higher elevation of these teas, it's similar to having a, a cheddar with the protein crystals. So with the salt crystals, once you eat a small little piece, you get a long finish in your mouth. It is exactly the same when we're comparing elevation to these teas. So let me decant. The leaves have opened up about halfway. They're not fully open yet, but with Formosa oolongs, because they're rolled, we can brew it a few times. And the color of these deeps look exactly the same right now. When we keep all the variables the same, the color of the brew is similar because we're using uh, water at the same temperature and the steep times all the same. I think at home, it's harder to gauge the quality between say a packaged tea that says high mountain oolong versus um, a nicer one if you're just going to brew it in a large pot and um, let it stew. So when we compare it this way, by keeping all the variables the same, we could gauge the flavor. I'm pouring them into some tasting cups. With the small tasting cups, it also cools down much quicker, which makes it easier to taste. And we do taste the teas very much like wine. So you want to take a sip, swallow a little, chew it a little bit, and then draw air through. 
so that you could taste the finish. That's very nice, very easy to drink. The Dongling is refreshing. But for the Ali Shan, it's much more complex. You know, once you taste the really premium teas, it's really hard to go back and drink the everyday ones or summer harvest. All of these are spring harvest. They just arrived, so we could really taste how fresh they are. But the Ali Shan has more of that toasted, nuttier finish. It tastes very much like the sweet corn I just had uh, over the weekend in a barbecue. It's so easy to drink and you, you want to continue drinking it. And the Dai Ling is the best. So a lot of times on my sourcing trips, I would uh, go straight up the mountain and then come back down slowly in the next few days. But when I find that um, I tasted the premium teas at the highest peak, it's really hard to get back down to sea level and then start drinking the ones uh, at sea level. So uh, I've learned to reverse my trip now so that I could take some rest after um, arriving Taiwan. And then for my first uh, few farms uh, in Taiwan, I would first visit Nanto and then reverse this. It is so interesting that all of them look the same. They're somewhat lukewarm, so it's easy for me to pick up the flavor. But the Dai Ling is um, leaving a finish all over my mouth. It's very sweet. It has a nose. I think when we're using small tasting cups like this, when you pick it up to take a sip, you're also getting a whiff of the aroma that it's being released. The reason elevation affects the flavor of the tea is the tea plants grow much slower when it's grown at 9,000 feet in dense fog. Uh, it takes um, several months to get a crop. So if you're getting a spring harvest, uh, sometimes it can be harvested early June rather than April and May. Most people assume that Formosa oolongs like any other green teas get picked in the springtime. But uh, at a higher elevation, because of the slower growth, the tea plant produces less leaves. So you're getting a richer flavor when it's picked in the later months. Uh, so if you want to read a little bit more about the different types of uh, Formosa oolongs and how they affect the flavor of, of the teas, uh, please visit our website, redblossomtea.com. And of course, follow us on our YouTube channel.